Hey there, it's Mark with Mark's Astro Journey. In this video, I wanna talk about filter wheels and filter offsets. Did you recently start using a filter wheel in your imaging train? Are you now spending more time running autofocus during an imaging session? So one question is, could you be spending more time on acquiring images instead of running autofocus? Have you ever had an imaging session where you captured an unbalanced amount of images with your different filters? For example, let's say you ended up with the same quantity of luminance, red and green subframes, but then clouds moved in and you didn't get many blue subframes. Of course, the same could happen with narrowband filters. For example, you ended up with the same quantity of subframes for H-alpha and oxygen, but very few subframes for the sulfur filter. This means you're going to have to do another imaging session to capture a balanced number of subframes overall. If you start using filter offsets in your imaging acquisition software, it can help you address or improve some of these issues. So first of all, what do I mean by filter offsets? Well, not all filters are what they call parfocal. In other words, using narrowband filters as an example, let's say you focus with the H-alpha filter selected. The subframes captured are an excellent focus. Now you might attempt to validate the focus using a batten off mask, some measuring tool and software that analyzes the image quality, or it may be very evident as part of post-processing how well the focus actually was. Let's say then you switch to the oxygen filter, the sulfur filter without running autofocus again. You then notice when checking those subframes that the focus is slightly off. So in comparison to the focus or position for the H-alpha filter, there's an offset for the oxygen or the sulfur filter. The focus or position is slightly different uh, between each of these filters. As an example, the H-alpha might be in focus at focus or position 4600, whereas the oxygen filter might be in focus at focus or position 4580. And finally, the sulfur filter might be in focus at focus or position 4607. So the difference between each of these focus or positions for each filter is the offset. So if we read in the online forums on this topic, it seems like a lot of amateur astrophotographers have reported that this may not only be an issue with the quality of the filters, but other components in the image train may also have an effect. For example, a focal reducer or field flattener. So if you're not using filter offsets, what might a typical example look like of your imaging sequence? I use Nina to demonstrate this. Now keep in mind, I'm keeping this example simple for illustration purposes. Your imaging sequences may be much more involved and have many other steps or be configured differently to suit your preferences. When not using filter offsets, a person might have in their sequence a step to switch the filter and then run autofocus. Next, they might take a certain number of subframes for that filter. And we see the switching filter and running autofocus repeated for oxygen. And then of course we would capture another set of frames for that filter. And then when we switch to the sulfur filter, we would run autofocus again. And then subsequently capture a set of subframes for that filter. If instead we decided to use filter offsets, we would set this up in the options of Nina. And then we would set up our sequence differently to take advantage of filter offsets. So the first thing we need to do is run autofocus on each filter and get the focus or position. And once we have this focus or position, you can see that for luminance here, we'll record that so we can derive the offsets from our master filter. So here I'll run this next for the red filter. And of course I've sped this focusing up. So it'll be quick and we can see the 4601 position for red. And we'll enter that into our spreadsheet to do our calculation. And so we'll next run the autofocus for green. And here we see our focus or position of 4619. So we'll enter that along the other with the other filters in our spreadsheet. So next we'll run the autofocus for the blue filter. And we see our focus or position of 4610. We'll plug that number into our spreadsheet as well. And next we'll run the autofocus for the H-alpha filter. And we see our focuser position of 4595. And we'll plug that into our list as well. 
and we're seeing our offsets getting calculated here on the right. And now I'm running the autofocus for the oxygen filter. And we see our focuser position of 4602. We'll plug that in also to our spreadsheet to get our offset. And again, these offsets are calculated off of luminance. And here's my last filter, sulfur. So we'll run autofocus for that. And we'll get our focuser position of 4596. And so we'll plug this into our spreadsheet, and this will give us the offset from our master, our luminance filter, for all the other filters. So next in Nina, we can choose the options on the left-hand navigation. Next under options, we can choose the autofocus section of settings. And then we want to enable use filter offsets. This is just an on-off button here. And then, of course, in my case, I chose to set the luminance filter as the master or autofocus filter. And you can see that checked here. And here below, you can see I took the numbers from my spreadsheet that I calculated as offsets, and I put them in the focus offset column. I didn't override the default autofocus exposure time. But one thing that I might try in the future is changing that for the narrowband filters, H-alpha, oxygen, and sulfur, given that um, the light they're capturing is more limited. It could be advantageous, I suppose, to have a slightly longer um, time for the, the exposure time for the autofocusing for those filters. So how would our sequence look different now in Nina that we're using filter offsets? We would probably have our normal things in the beginning like cooling the camera, solving and sinking, or slewing to the target, uh, starting the guider, turning on the dew heater. So next in our sequence, we could add an instruction to run our autofocus. It already knows, based on the filter offset settings, that luminance is the autofocus filter, and it will use that to run the autofocus. So next, we can create a series of tasks in the sequence to switch the filter, and then take either subframe exposures, if we do it in a loop, and we can just set up each filter with however many we want for subframes. And notice we're not in between filters doing any focusing. So now the question is, how is this going to behave when the sequence is ran? Um, I kicked it off, I'm running this, I sped this up so we don't have to wait through all these initial steps. But you can see that it did the basic things in the beginning. It's running that first autofocus on the luminance filter. The first filter switch is luminance. Since it's already been moved to luminance for autofocus, it didn't really have to switch filters or change the filter position. As it completes the subframe, notice that the bottom, when it switches to the red filter, it moves the focuser position as it's switching the filter. And then it takes that subframe. As the red subframe completes, it switches to the green filter. It also moves focuser to 4623. As it completes that subframe, notice it switches to the blue filter, and then it moves the focuser position to 4619. And after completing that subframe, notice it switches to the H-alpha filter and repositions the focuser to 4597. And as it captures that subframe, it's going to switch to the oxygen filter, moving the focuser to position 4598. And then lastly, it's going to switch to the sulfur filter and capture our last subframe in this loop, this iteration for the sequence. Of course, I ran these exposures for five seconds. No one would do that. And you would set these exposure times to whatever it is you're trying to accomplish with your imaging session. And then, of course, you'd calculate how many iterations you would want to run before you would perform another autofocus. And... Of course, these are very short exposures of five seconds on the seven sisters. 
I'll open each one just to take a quick look at them. Um, this is not a, a very exhaustive way to check the focus right, but it just shows us the raw data in each of the FITS files that I captured when I went through this sequence where I was using filter offsets. We'd probably be using 60 second, two minute, three minute exposures on the broadband and five minutes or more on the narrow band if we were seriously trying to image something. So in our sequence definition, we would have a step to do our autofocus. We would follow that by a series of switching filters and taking subframes or taking frame exposures. We could loop if we wanted to, to collect a number of those before we do our next autofocus. So in summary, if you're using a filter wheel, but not using filter offsets, and you're running autofocus every time you switch filters, maybe it'd be worth a little bit of time to experiment with filter offsets to see if it might help you out. You might be able to spend less time running autofocus, and you also might be able to acquire more subframes and get the most out of each imaging session in the limited time available. We all know things come up, weather, other circumstances, and we'll only have sometimes a few hours of imaging session time. And lastly, you might be able to avoid ending up with a disparate quantity of subframes for the set of filters you're using on the target. Of course, other factors can affect focus during an imaging session. So obviously, I'm not suggesting that you only focus uh, one time at the beginning of an imaging session. Based upon the factors you see affecting your focus, for example, temperature changes, how well the focuser retains its position, and does it slip in the speed of your telescope, well, you may make adjustments based upon that. So usually through trial and error, given the factors we talked about, it's gonna help a person learn how often they need to run their autofocus during an imaging session. It might be every so many minutes or it could be every hour or every so many hours. Well, I hope you found this video helpful and I'm wishing you clear skies.